Imagine facing a life-threatening illness surrounded by enemies and feeling utterly powerless. Yet in the midst of despair, you experience a miraculous turnaround, a divine intervention that changes everything. This is the story of Hezekiah. How can his song of deliverance and faith inspire us in our own struggles today? Becker, I'm the founder of YOU Ministries. I'm so thrilled that you are here to explore the Bible with us in our season titled Biblical Hymns Unplugged, Raw, Reverent, and Revealing. So whether you're here for the very first time or you've been with us on this journey for a while, um, your presence is a blessing to our community for sure. So uh, for those curious about who I am, uh, my journey or what I believe in, there's a link in the description box below where you can learn more about me and our ministry. So you can find those details there about any supplies I might use during our creative time together. And this is probably a good time to tell you that this is truly a Bible study. I do provide you with a free printable that accompanies the study for our creative time, but uh, I'm not here to teach you how to like make things or um, lead you in that creative process too much. I'm here to lead you in the Bible study creatively. So I'm leading you through a Bible study as we. I'm learning right beside you along the way. And I just want to be clear that I do not claim to know everything in the Bible, but like you, I am a student and I'm learning and I'm growing in faith and through this creative study right alongside all of my Bible study friends. So um, one more thing, episodes drop every Wednesday, but life happens and sometimes I may fall short. And so if you would please give me some grace if that happens. But now that the housekeeping is out of the way, let's, uh, and before we dive into today's lesson, could I ask a favor of you? It's very, very important. If you find value in anything that we do in our discussions, could you please show us some support by giving the video a thumbs up? these. It's kind of like a roll call for us to let us know it's being watched and for YouTube to keep playing our videos. So, and then don't forget to subscribe to that channel and hit that notification bell, because if I don't drop an episode on a Wednesday, you're going to want to know like, where is it? But it will give you a notification that it did drop or if it comes late and I don't drop it on time. So it, your engagement is really crucial to our in community and it helps us share the word of God in such meaningful and impactive ways. So, hey, and one more thing, if you're a newcomer, a warm and heartfelt welcome to you, just check that description box out where all the essentials are going to be there for you. Everything that you need about our printable resources. When you opt in for the freebie, you're going to get it from lesson one and progress week by week in chronological, well, we'll say harmony for this season. And, and your printables will be delivered straight to your inbox. And if you want the bundle that you might see me using in the lessons, uh, that link is there as well. And it'll take you to our website at youministries.com. So your presence here is really enriching to us on this collective journey. So thanks for joining us and together. And let's go ahead and dive in to God's word, grow in faith and inspire one another today. Well, welcome to our final episode, episode 21. Is it episode 21 already? Wow. Couldn't be. Hmm. It just doesn't seem right. I hope that I'm saying the right episode because it just doesn't seem like we could be to episode 21 already, but it is week four of Hezekiah. So, um, and we are in month five. So we got one more month left and, uh, yeah, I guess we're just moving right along so fast. It's uh, crazy. Anyway, today we are going to embark on a journey of reflection and personal growth through all of these powerful lessons of Hezekiah's song and we are just going to dive into this lesson and let it guide us and really hope and pray for some application 
of Hezekiah's story into our own lives. And so let's uncover that impact of Hezekiah's faith and how can it, it can inspire us to trust God's unfailing love and power. Today we are going to focus on these key scriptures coming from Isaiah chapter 38 verses 9 to 20, Psalm chapter 30 verse 2 to 3, Psalm 107 verses 19 to 20, James chapter 5 verse 15 to 16, and 2 Chronicles 32 verses 24 to 26. The key points we're going to cover today in our lesson are, number one, Hezekiah's illness and prayer. Number two, God's response and healing. Number three, Hezekiah's song of thanksgiving. Four, personal reflection on divine intervention. And five, living out the lessons of faith. So if you don't mind, let's bow our head and have a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come before you with grateful hearts once again, seeking your wisdom and guidance as we dive into the life and this song of Hezekiah one last time and just open our hearts and minds to the things that you would like us to learn from the lesson and that you have for us today. Help us to reflect on our own journeys and let's see your hand at work in our lives, strengthen our faith, deepen our trust in you. And just teach us to live out these truths that we learn. May your spirit move among us, bringing us clarity, understanding, inspiration. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. All right. We're going to read from the ESV. And I am going to read, even though we have already read this before, going to read the Song of Hezekiah again. And this is a writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, after he had been sick and recovered from his sickness. I said in the middle of my days, I must depart. I am consigned to the gates of Sheol for the rest of my years. I said, I shall not see the Lord, the Lord in the land of the living. I shall look on the man no more among the inhabitants of the world. My dwelling is plucked up and removed from me like a shepherd tent. Like a weaver, I have rolled up my life. He cuts me off from the loom from day to night you bring me to an end i calm myself until morning like a lion he breaks all my bones from day to night you bring me to an end like a swallow or a crane i chirp i moan like a dove my eyes are weary with looking upward O oh lord i am oppressed be my pledge of safety what shall I say? For he has spoken to me, and he himself has done it. I walk slowly all my years because of the bitterness of my soul. O oh Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. O oh, restore me to the health and make me live. Behold, it was for me the welfare that I had great bitterness. But in love you have delivered my life from the pit of destruction, for you have cast all my sins beyond your back. For Shell doesn't not thank you. Death does not praise you. Those who have gone down to the pit do not hope for your faithfulness. The living, the living, he thanks you as I do this day. The Father makes known to the children your faithfulness. The Lord will save me and he will play music on the stringed instruments all the days of our lives at the house of the Lord. And Psalm chapter 30, verse 2 to 3. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought me up, my soul from shell. You restored me to life among those who go down to the pit. And from Psalm 107, verse 19 and 20. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. From James chapter 5, verse 15 to 16. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. And 2 Chronicles 32, verse 24 to 26. In those days, Hezekiah became sick and at that point of death, and he prayed to the Lord and he answered him and gave him a sign. But Hezekiah did not make 
return according to the benefit done to him, for his heart was proud. Therefore wrath came upon him in Judah and Jerusalem, but Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord did not come up them in the days of Hezekiah. All right, let's get ready for our creative time together with key point number one. And that's Hezekiah's illness and prayer. So when Hezekiah was laying on his bed, weak and weary from his sickness that threatened his life, as the king of Judah, he had faced so many challenges as we've learned all month, but this illness was different. It seemed to herald his end. So the news spread quickly throughout the palace and beyond, casting a shadow over the entire kingdom. So in his in his anguish, Hezekiah turned to the Lord, and with tears streaming down his face, he poured out his heart in prayer. Oh Lord, he cried, remember how I've walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart. Please spare my life and grant me healing. His prayer echoed through the halls of the palace, reaching the ears of the prophet Isaiah, so moved by Hezekiah's plea, Isaiah returned with a message from the Lord. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add 15 years to your life. I will deliver you and the city from the hand of king, from the king of Assyria. So Hezekiah's heart swelled with gratitude and awe. And the Lord had heard his cry. And he answered with mercy and grace. So he was overwhelmed with thanksgiving. So Hezekiah penned a song of praise and thanksgiving, declaring God's faithfulness and deliverance. His song resonated not only through the palace, but also through the hearts of all who heard it. It was really a testament to the power of prayer and God's steadfast love, even after all this time and everything that Israel had been through in Judah. So this um, Hezekiah's heart, it just, it just, his experiences teach us that when we have a dark moment, when we're in our darkest moments, when we are in illness or when we're in despair threatens to overwhelm us, we can turn to God in prayer. Hezekiah's faith and trust in God's ability to heal and deliver serve as a timeless example of how sincere and earnest prayer can move the heart of God and bring about miraculous outcomes in our life. He hears us. He waits on us. He wants to hear from you. Are you talking to God daily? I hope you're talking to him daily. I hope you're talking to him all day long. Key point number two, God's response and healing. So upon hearing Hezekiah's heartfelt plea, the prophet Isaiah conveyed God's response. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add 15 years to your life. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. So Hezekiah's heart swelled with gratitude and awe. And the Lord had heard his cry and answered with mercy and grace. And overwhelmed with thanksgiving, Hezekiah penned a song of praise and thanksgiving, declaring God's faithfulness and deliverance. And his song resonated not only through the palace, but also through the hearts of all who heard it, a testament to the power of prayer and steadfast love. So Hezekiah's experience teaches us that in our darkest moments when illness or despair threatens to overwhelm us, we can turn to God in prayer. And then Hezekiah's faith and trust in God's ability to heal and deliver serve again as that example of how sincere and earnest prayer can move the heart of God and bring around and about miraculous outcomes in our lives. Key point three, Hezekiah's song of thanksgiving. So Hezekiah, having been delivered from the brink of death by God's miraculous intervention, composed a heartfelt song of thanksgiving and praise. 
in Isaiah 38, 9 to 20, he expresses his profound gratitude to God's faithfulness and mercy in sparing his life and delivering him from illness and potential death. So in this song, Hezekiah reflects on the depth of his suffering and how God's intervention brought him back from the brink of shell. And he acknowledges his initial despair and how God turned his mourning into dancing and his sorrow into joy. So Hezekiah's song not only celebrates his personal deliverance, but also serves again as a testimony to God's power and faithfulness before all who hears it. And his song of thanksgiving can teach us that importance of gratitude and praise in response to God's faithfulness and intervention in our lives. It reminds us to reflect on God's past actions of deliverance and to give him the glory and the honor he deserves. Key point number four, personal reflection on the divine intervention. Hezekiah's experience prompts that reflection and we can reflect on our own encounters with divine intervention. Just as Hezekiah earnestly prayed and saw God's miraculous, miraculous response, we too face challenges that test our faith and reliance on God. And we, when we're reflecting on these moments, help us really to recognize that God's faithfulness and presence is there in our life so when we reflect on his story we can learn the importance of turning to God in prayer during those difficult times it encourages us to trust in his ability to intervene and to bring about solutions beyond our understanding and then reflect reflecting on it invites us to examine how we approach our struggles and how we can deepen our faith by acknowledging God's role in every aspect of our life Key point number five, living out the lessons of faith. So Hezekiah's story challenges us to live out the lessons of faith demonstrated through his experience. His unwavering trust in, God's, in, God, uh, in God during times of his personal crisis serves again as an example, and, and not just an example, a powerful example of dependence on divine guidance. When we study Hezekiah's journey as we have all month, I mean, you should be encouraged and want to cultivate that deeper faith in God's promises and prominence. You should want to di be di diving deeper into the Bible and learning about this because he, he gave a heartfelt cry to God. And, th you know, that's what God wants us to do. It doesn't matter. There's nothing too small for God. Go to God in prayer no matter what it is. This involves not only seeking God earnestly in prayer, but also actively trusting. You can't just go to God in prayer and then say you're going to trust Him and then take back your prayer and bring it back to human. I used to call it tug of war. And maybe you've heard me say it before, some of you that study the Bible with me in our private Facebook group. But for those that you haven't heard the analogy that I use, I call it the tug of war. I used to give it to God, pray about it, give it to God, and then I would like tug of war it back. I play tug of war with God. Give it a little bit to God, well, I pull it back to me. Give it to God, pull it back to me. That's not that's not trusting God. That's pulling it back into my human behavior and me trying to take it on to me. You know what? I don't have control over this world. I don't have control over what's going to happen. God has control over what's going to happen. He's got it all planned out. The whole, everything's going to happen as it's going to happen. I have to trust that his plan is for the best and that he's going to work it out. What he's waiting is to see, am I going to let the human side of me, my own will, go forward or am I going to trust that his will is best and what he's got going on is best for me when I learn to cut that rope when I pray and trust God and cut the rope and not play tug of war anymore is when I found peace in God that perfect when I found that peace according to his perfect will and that faith intervene and I'm telling you you can have it too it's embracing a lifestyle and it takes practice because being human 
is hard. <laughs> it's just hard. <laughs> being a Christian's hard. It's not easy being a Christian. It's it takes work. It takes work. And the more you study the Bible, the more you learn, the more God opens up, and the more you go, wow, okay. And then the more you just want to be a better person, and the and the more the devil tries to attack you. It is not be. It is, it's not easy being a Christian. Nobody said it was going to be easy, but it's worth it because there's two places. There's two things that's going to happen when you leave the physical body because we're all going to die some someday. So where you go is up to you because when you're, when your spirit leaves your body, you're going to go one of two places. So it's up to you where you're going to go. Some life lessons we can learn from Hezekiah, the power of prayer. Hezekiah's story reminds us of the profound impact of sincere prayer. It teaches us to approach God with honesty, with faith, and persistence in times of distress. Number two, God's faithfulness. Through Hezekiah's experiences, we learn about God's faithfulness to his promises. Hezekiah trusted in God's ability to deliver, and God responded with mercy and grace. Number three, gratitude and thanksgiving. Hezekiah's song of thanksgiving highlights that importance of gratitude, even in the face of adversity, and it encourages us to cultivate a thankful heart acknowledging God's blessing and deliverance in our own life. And, and one thing here, start your prayers out with thanks. Thank God for something. Give him praise for something he's done in your life before anything else. Go to him in prayer and thank him first. Number four, key, key, uh, life lesson, dependence on God. Hezekiah's reliance on God during his illness underscores the importance of depending on God in all circumstances. It challenges us to surrender our fears and uncertainties to him, knowing he is in control. Number five, living a faithful life. The lessons from Hezekiah prompt us to live faithfully before God, walking in obedience and trust. And it inspires us to integrate our faith into our daily lives, seeking to honor God in everything we do. So as we conclude our final lesson today with Hezekiah, I really hope that, <laughs> I really think that Hezekiah's story is one that you've enjoyed and that you can really take a lot from all month because there's, I don't think there's not one of us out there that hasn't had something some kind of illness, some kind of something in our life or someone near to us that has been hit home with illness or depression or some something terminal. So I think that his story really could hit home and there were so many good lessons that we learned and as we read through his song and how he poured out on the pages of black and white. So I hope that you've really, really enjoyed it. Well, guess what though? Next month is our last month, and we're going to hit into the Song of Mary, and we're going to journey through that in four parts before we finish out this season of Biblical Hymns, and it sure has been fun, but we're starting our brand new year, Treasure Hunt Through the Scriptures with Jesus, and we are going to travel all next year, 2025, with Jesus and uncover riddles and clues and all kinds of fun stuff. So, but for next month, we're going to head into episode 23, Lesson 1 with the Song of Mary. So don't miss out on that opportunity. And uh, visit us on the web at yluministries.com to stay updated, explore our faith pod, and explore our mini pod. Uh, anything else? We got a lot of freebies over there, too. Things that come to you uh, in your email, um, devotions once a week, all kinds of stuff. And then we study the Bible together in our private Facebook group. Not in the group. I mean, we do stuff in the group as well, but we, ha we meet virtually on Zoom, so you can check out all those details. Girl, read your Bible is our private Facebook group. And one more thing, if you don't know Jesus, stay tuned. There's an attached video after today's lesson. And I talk all about it. And if, you don't, if you've never been baptized after the invite Jesus into your heart, there's I go into different types of baptism and what baptism's all about. So, yeah. All right, blessings, and I'll see you guys next week. This is Tammy Becker. Bye.
Salvation in its simplest form is the act of being saved or delivered from something. In the Bible, salvation primarily refers to being saved from the consequences of sin and reconciled to God. The scripture teaches us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and the wages of sin or death. However, God in his great love and mercy provided us a way to be saved and through faith in Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins and rose again, we can receive salvation and eternal life. The salvation is free gift. It's a free gift from God. And it's not something that we can earn through our own efforts or through good works. Salvation is a central theme in the scriptures. And it is the means by which we are saved from consequence of sin and restored to the righteous relationship with God. And through faith in Jesus Christ, we can receive this free gift of salvation and eternal life. And as believers, it's important for us to understand and embrace the biblical explanation of salvation as it shapes our understanding of God's love, His grace, and His redemption. So if you would like to invite Jesus into your life today, I would love to guide you in a prayer. And please just say the words with me as they appear on the screen because the Bible teaches us to confess with our mouths. Dear God, I come to you acknowledging that I am a sinner in need of your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins and rose again. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Please come into my heart, cleanse me of my sins, and guide me on the path of righteousness. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer with me today, God bless you and welcome to the family. Know that you are not alone. We have resources scattered all over our website at yoministries.com and I would love to leave you with just a few key things to get you started on your journey. Number one, read the Bible. Start reading the Bible regularly to grow in your faith and understand God's word. Number two, pray. The importance of prayer and how we can communicate with God through prayer also helps in understanding the Bible. And in turn, the Bible helps us to pray. Number three, find a church or online community with a local church or online community to fellowship with or, or other, with other believers. You'll receive spiritual guidance. Number four, join a Bible study. We offer several Bible study groups in our private Facebook group, Girl Read Your Bible, even a couple's one, to deepen their understanding of the knowledge of the Bible and build relationships with other Christians. But it doesn't even have to be ours. Find one that fits, you know, fits and feels right for you, your place of home. Number five, share the faith. Encourage to encourage and you know i want to encourage you to share your faith with others just be a light in your community six seek baptism if you have never been baptized i got to give you some key points about this baptism is a significant symbolic act in the christian faith that represents a believer's identification with Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. So here's some key things on baptism I think that are so important. One is symbolism. Baptism symbolizes the believer's spiritual cleansing and new life in Christ. It rep represents the washing away of sins and the believer's decision to follow Jesus. Number two, it's obedience. Baptism is also an act of obedience to Jesus's command in the Bible. And Jesus instructed his followers to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you can find that in Matthew 28, 19. Number three, public declaration. Baptism is a public declaration of one's faith in Jesus Christ. It is a way to open, profess, openly profess one commitment to following Christ and being part of the Christian community. 
Number four, community. Baptism is often done in the presence of other believers, symbolizing the new believer's inclusion in the body of Christ and the support of the Christian community. Number five is types of baptism. There are different types and forms of baptism practiced in various Christian traditions, including immersion, being fully submerged in water, pouring water poured over head and sprinkling. Uh, the method of baptism can depend on the church or denomination that you might associate with. So being a new Christian could seem like a lot to consider baptism, but it really is a step of obedience and public declaration of your faith and can be so meaningful part of your spiritual journey. So if you have any more questions or need further clarification, just please reach out. All of my details are in the description box each and every week of the channel here. May God bless your Christian walk.